Hi, I'm Tim, and welcome to Watch You Want. Thanks for logging on. Today, we are looking at JLC's magnum opus in the modern era. You are looking at the Jeger Le Coult Dual Met Acronograph 2010 White Gold Limited Edition, one of only 200 made. This is arguably the best looking version of the most important modern Jeger Le Coult. If you love JLC, the Grand Maison of Le Sentier, this is iconic of the brand. Sure, there's the Reverso. Sure, there's the Memo Box. Those are great historical references, and they're important historical threads that continue in the catalog. But what has the brand done to make itself relevant in the modern era? Well, to anyone who asks that question, I respond, this, the Duo Met. In 2007, this watch was Time Zone's Watch of the Year, as voted by the fans, the people who know best. And let me tell you, of all the novelties, all the complications, unveiled during the 2000s, this may be the standout. Because while everyone has a minute repeater, a split second, a grand complication, a tourbillon, no one else has this. It's not just the Foudroyant. It's not just the eight independently moving hands on this dial or the digital minutes disc on the chronograph dial. It's what's powering it behind the scenes that makes this watch. And what's powering it is JLC's epic caliber 380 inspired by a 19th century 1881 pocket watch chronometer minute repeater the caliber 380 is jeger le Coult. respect for tradition beautiful craft finish finish that is on par with anything you will see from vacheron or longa it is technological innovation its heritage translated into a relevant modern package with new innovations for today that will stay relevant tomorrow. So let's talk a little bit about what you're looking at here. Let's go over the architecture of the movement and work our way back to the dial. First and foremost, two main spring barrels, one for the time, hours, minutes, and seconds, one for the chronograph, each powering a separate drivetrain, effectively two watches in one. The idea being that on a conventional chronograph, or any complicated watch really, when you have a complication running, drawing power from the same barrel as the hours, minutes, and seconds, the addition of that extra load is going to lower the amplitude of the balance, slow the timing of the watch, and have an adverse, def an adverse effect on precision. Uh, chronometrically, it's just not good. And now, there is a shortcut around that. You can drive the complication directly off the barrel. But what that does is it burns down the power reserve faster. So while you don't lose amplitude and timing doesn't suffer, the watch basically goes dead quicker. It's like pulling something with a truck. Now you can pull it slower and burn the same amount of gas, you won't get where you're going as quickly, the, the rate will suffer, or you can dump the throttle, you can maintain speed, but you're going to go through your fuel faster. JLC gets around that by incorporating two separate parallel drivetrains meeting in a single regulating organ. The regulating organ is powered by the hours, minutes, and seconds barrel. The chronograph, almost like trains going through an intersection, they're switched but not powered by the switching rec mechanism of that escapement. So the chronograph isn't actually drawing on the power of the balance or the power of the hours, minutes, and seconds. It's just being switched on and off. So its power is providing the motive force for the chronograph hours, minutes, seconds, and flying seconds. And it's where these two movements meet, right there at 6 o'clock on the front dial, in that flying one-sixth of a second foudroyant. That's the junction point and that's where the power trains sort of merge. So you have two separate movements operating completely in sync. These two seconds hands at the center, one gold, one white gold. Beautiful contrast, by the way, just the way that was done artistically to segment the dial. That one will never catch up with the other unless, of course, you stop it, in which case it freezes perfectly. And you can read off the hours, the minutes, the tens, I should m mention the tens, and then the single digit minutes, you can read the seconds, and then you can also read the sixths of seconds. And to reset it, it's almost like a little theatrical display in itself. You press the mono pusher, let the foudroyant return to its station, you release, and it zeroes everything. Remember, you can read the hours, the tens, and then the single digits on the digital minute wheel right there. So it's actually a pretty easy watch to use at a glance. JLC simplifies things with all those visible indications. Two separate power reserves. The watch has a total power reserve of 50 hours. Now you might wonder, can I wind one without having the other energized? Well, you cannot operate the chronograph if the hours, minutes, and seconds are not themselves energized because they operate the balance. So you have to have each of these power reserves at least somewhat topped off to use the full functionality of the watch. 
Now what JLC also does is finish. They're not necessarily known as an Otegam finishing house because complications and value for the money tends to be their focus. They focus on building every part of a watch, doing everything in-house. But competency means competency in all fields. And being a manufacturer means being able to do what you want when you want to do it, and JLC can. The finish on this watch is to a standard that would make Langa or Vacheron blush that would make them feel the heat, quite honestly, from their sister in the Richemont conglomerate, because everything about this watch is top of the line. It takes three days to assemble the movement, which is nothing compared to the weeks required to finish the components. All of the blued screws are polished with beveled slots, camphored heads, and beautifully heat-fired in a kiln to create that cobalt tone. All of the pivot jewels feature a partridge eye polish around their countersinks. The beveling is by hand exclusively on all of these German silver, that is nickel copper bridge plates. And on the main plate, there's a tight perlage pattern artistically rendered and also beautifully open and visible to inspection because the movement fills the entire 42 millimeter case. And so it's quite light and airy. And if you look at the column wheel right here, you can see all of the levers. You can see the wheels. You can see all of the works operating in a sublime mechanical choreography that really keeps no secrets. This is a beautiful watch. You almost wish you could wear it upside down sometime because that nickel silver with its gorgeous golden hue has a distinctly different look than the blinding rhodium flash of most Swiss watchmaking. It looks like the back of a Langa and really it's a tribute to that 19th century predecessor, that original 1881 minute repeating chronometer that inspired this watch. The JLC Heritage Department had significant say in the design of this movement. Not so much the engineering, but the aesthetics. That's right, even to the point of styling the movement, JLC left nothing to accident, and you could see that the focal point is that singular regulating organ, that one balance for the two movements. So thematically even, there's coherence here. Black polish on the head of the balance cock, the only place on the movement you see the black polish, besides the tops of the column wheel screw and the columns themselves, and then radiating Cote de Genève that blazes outward in every direction, centered on the balance itself, continuous and aligned on every bridge. That standard of quality control, of precision to be able to align the Cote de Genève radiating out on all the surrounding bridges so that the essentially discontinuous bridges feature continuous lines engraved into that soft German silver. It's an incredible work of artistry and an incredibly well-conceived, fully realized artistic effort. The artistry continues on the front. Now you have white gold hands for all hours, minutes, and seconds, as I mentioned, rose gold for all chronograph functions. Let's reset that. And I will mention that the dial is not gloss, it is matte, and it has silvered indications and calibrations so that the effect is very subtle in person. It's not an enormous gloss surface. It's actually somewhat understated, and in person, the watch plays with enormous power. Now you can see on the wrist, my wrist is six and a third inches, 16 centimeters. The watch fits well. It's not the thinnest thing on earth, but again, remember what's in there. Unbelievable technology, unbelievable watchmaking competence. I'm glad they added a little bit more volume to this case, just so the movement would be so open and visible. And to be honest, because the lugs are short and soldered in a vintage style, they fit very well on a smaller wrist. And you could actually probably even go down to six inch diameter of a wrist and, or rather six inch circumference and you would find that this fits quite well. The alligator strap is very supple. The watch has a nice flat case back that accommodates an average wrist profile quite well. It sits nice, it's not tight, it doesn't want a hula hoop, and as a dress reference, that deadly combination of black and white makes it the perfect, I would say the perfect companion for almost any occasion. Not a colored gold watch like the original Duomet chronographs. This one's more versatile. That combination of the black dial and the white metal can wear well with short sleeves. It can wear well with jeans or board shorts. It can also wear well with a tux. So if you want the one Duomet chronograph that can kind of do it all stylistically, this is the only game in town. And it's available with complete boxes, papers, and documents of provenance. One of only 200 made. These don't come around that often. So see it for yourself, and if you're quick and you have awesome taste, I recommend you get it for yourself at our website, Watch You Want.